Hello! Good, Good morning, morning, Heritage Church! There we there go! We go. Can we scoot your way? Ooh, I'm, your I'm way? like a ghost. Man, we look like a ghost. Are we, are we washed out? <laughs> we can fix it in just a second. We're glad it, you're here. Watching. We're glad you're here on Facebook Live with us. Oh, there we go. There now we, there we go. That's that was fun. a little bright. I, I'm waiting for my eyes to adjust. We're glad you're here with us online at Heritage Heritage Online on Facebook Live. Um, if this is your first time here, click on the link in the uh, announcements part of it, and you can go fill out an online connection card. If it's your first time, we have a sweet treat we'd love to send you, so fill that out in full. We are on Facebook Live, so you can interact, you can share, you can, we'll ask questions and you can answer them during the service. If you're our guest, we welcome you. We know that you have many choices of things you could be watching on your screen this morning, so we're glad to have you Order. with us. We would love to send us a sweet treat from us to you. Send us a private message, and we'd be glad to do that with you if you're our guest this morning. did want to let you know that we have unveiled a whole slew of community mental health support groups. We have about six groups that will begin meeting after January 15th, so if you're interested in any of that, you can private message us, and we can help you plug in. Maybe you can help some Someone else as well. All right, so we're glad you're here. We're glad you're here for the message series Next Level, and you can get online and look at the one from last week. But we're talking about how to take our life to that next level that Jesus wanted for us. I mean, Jesus said this. He said, I came so that they have real and eternal life, more and better life than they ever dreamed of. And so we always think that means that you got to have more of something to have a next level life. Like last week, we talked about more popularity, more fame, you know, and, and with social media, that's a huge thing, right? You know, and, but it turns out it's not. And this week, we're going to talk about everybody's favorite subject. Everybody's favorite subject is money and wealth. So, I mean, I mean, how many of there, and you can give me a thumbs up or a heart or something like that on Facebook Live, how many of you wouldn't mind being rich? I wouldn't yeah, hate yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I wouldn't hate it. I wouldn't hate I, it. I'm not necessarily looking for it, but I wouldn't hate it. <laughs> and, and how many of you out there know a rich person? Give me a thumbs up. I, I, we know rich people. And now how many of you online now kind of know a rich person and in slightly judgy sort of way have thought, I could do rich better. I could be a better rich person than So, I mean, here's the good news. Go to Maine. It's a money state now because somebody just won over a billion dollars in a lottery up there. So that's a good question. We can ask that question. That should come up on the screen. What would you do if you won a billion dollars? Answer that on Facebook Live. I'd love. What would you do with a billion dollars? Somebody just handed it to you. Yeah, I mean, we've had dreams our whole life. What would happen if, you know, somebody won a lottery? We, we won a lottery. We don't play the lottery, but, we, you know, if we did, what would I do with that money? Crazy thing. If you don't play, you can't win. So we're definitely not winning. That's just stupid money. <laughs> That's just like, what would you do with a billion dollars, Suzanne? I would, I would pay all this property off, and we would oh, have all kinds of things yeah. that we could reach our community with. Oh, yeah. This would be would the help, kick in this church. Yeah, and we'd help so many people in the, in the area. I mean, you could just do, you could, you always wanted to be a philanthropist anyway. That's, right? my, that's my dream job, professional uh, philanthropist. Giving money away for a living. That's her <laughs> dream job. So, you know, our culture is obsessed with money. Our culture is very obsessed with money. And, and they did a survey online, and please don't go look for it, it's kind of sketchy, but they did this survey. They said that 24% that of people for $5 million, this was what, what sketchy thing would you do for $5 million? 24% said they'd eat a cockroach daily. They'd eat a live cockroach daily for the rest of their life for $5 million. And, and, and 30% said they'd spend five years in a maximum security prison. I've, I've seen those shows. I don't want to be at a max security prison. 44% said they would quit the internet for 15 years for $5 million. And, oh, that's kind of painful, right? And 50% and said, and this is where it gets really sketchy, they would allow one random death in the world for $5 million. That's horrible. That's, I mean, we'd do it, though, right? And here's the really bad part. 8% of you, 8% of you out there right now said they would eat their own pet for $5 million. <laughs> Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> Ew, right? So that's, I mean, that's just part of how we're obsessed with wealth. We would do all these really wacko, sketchy things for wealth, but that's always been the way, right? Even Jesus dealt with this all the time, right? I mean, there was this time when a, uh, a guy came up to the crowd, and they, they've been looking for the Messiah for a long time. This is Jesus the Christ. He's been doing uh, miracles. He's been feeding people. He's been healing. He's been doing all kinds of stuff. And this guy runs up to him in the crowd, and he said to him, Teacher, and what would you say, right? Tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. And Jesus is kind of taken aback. He said, Man, 
Who appointed me a judge or arbiter between you? (laughs) I'm, I'm not here to solve your money issues. And then he said to the crowd, he said, watch out, be on guard. He said it twice against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. I mean, this guy's in the presence of Christ and he's asking him to solve his money issues. But to be fair, that's a lot of our prayers. I mean, life, real life, isn't about money and stuff. And all of culture is shouting at you right now, especially American culture, you don't have enough. And Jesus says, be on guard. Because if we're going to take our faith to the next level, we have to stop chasing wealth. Let's see if anybody answered what they do with a billion dollars. Laura Edwards said, I'd pay off bills, buy my mom a house, tithe, and help people. I like that tithing part. It's pretty cool. Um, but, you know, that, oh, that shit, that's what you guys have more to do with a billion dollars. You all need to keep answering. Well, you know, truth is, there's, there's nothing wrong with money. I mean, we're, as we're talking right. about this one, there's nothing wrong with wealth. There's nothing wrong with stuff. The problem is, is when it becomes first place in our lives. In Scripture, there are over 2,000 verses that talk about money. And you might think to yourself, wow, 2,000 verses. God must be obsessed with money. God's not obsessed with money. God knew we would be obsessed with money, that humanity would be obsessed with money. I can remember when I was younger in college, and my definition of having all the money that I would need, I know I would have enough so if I could go to Walmart and buy whatever I wanted to buy. <laughs> Yay. Well, you know, the truth is I graduated, made more money, and I can go to Walmart and pretty much get, not can't pretty get much. it all, but pretty much I could get anything that I wanted there. But you know what? It's never enough. And they're millionaires. I mean, they get all that money and it's never enough. And this pursuit, this all-encompassing passion to get more money, it affects us. I mean, it affects our health. There are people that just run themselves into the ground to make money, to make it rain, as they say. It affects our relationships. I mean, if you're out spending money all the time, you don't have a whole lot of time for your marriage, and your kids grow up barely knowing you because you go to work when they're still in bed, and you come home when it's almost time for them to go to bed. And it certainly affects our relationship with God. And the thing about money and stuff, it's it's a thief. Those things are thieves. It'll steal your contentment. It'll steal your joy. It'll take your life. And so in this story, you know, this man asked, you know, where Michael just shared that we are to be on guard. Uh, Jesus says, let me, let, me, let me tell you a story. Jesus, Jesus says, let me tell you a parable, which is a story with a point in Scripture. And he tells this parable of this guy who had like the most amazing year, kind of like if he won the lottery in Maine. And he had all this stuff. And he's like, what am I going to do with all this? And he goes, oh, I know what I'll do. I'll build storehouses and I can store it all. And then he says this, the Scripture Retiring. says this, then I can, then, you know, then I can, you know, know I have everything. I can sit back. I can eat, drink. I can be merry. And the Scripture continues in this parable where it says this, But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be for whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Hmm. I think we know this, but we don't live it. I mean, we spend our life buying things we don't need that we're going to try to be figuring out in three or four years how we're going to get rid of them <laughs> to impress people who don't really care. Mm. And, and, you know, the truth is money and things are never going to satisfy us. And you can't even buy what's most important. Money is a barrier to our relationship with God. It's the, it's the chief competition for our hearts. It's the chief competition for our minds. It's the chief comp- competition for our time. It's the chief competition for our lives. And the truth is, no matter how much money we have, we always want a little bit more. Just not enough. And just like me with my Walmart story. <laughs> you see, wealth promises you a security, but wealth can't deliver it. If you want to take your faith to the next level, we must stop chasing wealth. So what's the solution? I mean, first of all, I think there's a couple things we need to realize. The first one is how rich you really are. Practically. I mean, the median U.S. income is $70,784. That makes you, for your, your household, in the top 4% of the richest people in the world. In the world. Because the median income for the world is $2,800. 
I mean, we, we make a big deal about the one percenters in the U.S., right? We make a big deal, and you should because it's ridiculous, right? But you are the 1% in the world if you, if you as an individual make $60,000 a year, just as an individual, right? Three billion people in the world live on $2 or less a day. Most of us spent $5 on their morning Starbucks, right? All That's, week long. We need some perspective, right? You know, and, and here's how do you know when your perspective is a little janky when it comes to money. It's about what upsets you. If you're Amazon took more than three days to get there, and you're firing off angry emails, then you probably have too much money. If you, if you go to Chick-fil-A and, and someone forgot to put your honey mustard in your bag with your nugs then, and you lose it, you probably got a little bit much money. Mm. I'm stepping on your toes, baby. I know. That's a, that's I, a big I know. deal. If you forget your AirPods and you have to actually hold your phone to your ear, you're probably rich, all right? And I'm not downplaying people with money issues. I, I grew up poor in America, and I understand what it's like to want and not get. I understand that. There's people out there struggling with that, but that's not most of us. That's not all of you out there. We need to, to learn to acknowledge that we are actually really rich, and, and we need to honor God. He blessed us. I mean, we could have been born in one of those countries where you only make $2, and it would be hard, hard to gather any wealth in your life. We need to be good at being rich because we've been blessed to be this. So let's do it then. You know, the Apostle Paul says, command those who are rich in this present world not to be arrogant, nor to put their hope in wealth, which is so uncertain, but to put their hope in God, who richly provides us with everything for our enjoyment. The second part of what we need to realize is really kind of spiritual. We need to shift our hope from money to God. See, when we think about money and we think about God, we, we kind of weigh it out a little bit subconsciously in our head. Yeah, hey, money, I can touch it, I can feel it, I can spend it, it can get me stuff that I want. I like my money, I can see it, and I can see it, right? You know, but God, I can't see God. I, sometimes I think I feel God, but I don't know about it. So we're weighing it out. I mean, we tend to put more weight on the, the, the money side, and we need to shift our thinking from from seen and unseen to temporary and eternal. We need to shift our thing because this can be taken from you. Money can be taken from you. And if you ever, ever lost hope, you have ever placed your hope in something that's been taken away, you know what I'm saying, but nothing can separate us from the love of Christ. If we're going to take our faith to the next level, we must stop chasing wealth. You know, what if when it came to our money and our stuff, what if we could, what if we could look at what true wealth might look like, hmm. what true riches looks like? I mean, even in our literature, we get these kind of stories. I mean, we read the story of Jesus, but then mm. even in the mainstream literature at Christmas time, we have the story of Ebenezer Scrooge, who was all about the money. Then we even have the Grinch. Remember that line at the end of Grinch? What if Christmas can't be bought in the store? What if Christmas is so much more? What if true riches can't be bought in a store? What if true riches is so much more? You know, money will never fill us, but God will. And let me ask you a powerful question. If you lost everything, would God be enough? <laughs> I mean, we spend so much time reaching for, striving, yearning for more money and more stuff. And this, this piece of scripture Michael just shared continues in 1 Timothy. And this is the Apostle Paul. He planted more churches than anybody. He was a, just the most incredible follower of Christ. He, most of the New Testament is written by him. And he wrote this letter to, to this young pastor. And he says this, he says, command them to do good, to be rich in good deeds and to be generous and willing to share. We live in a me, me, me world. Mm -hmm. God wants us to care about others' world, a we world. In this way, they will lay up treasure for themselves as a firm foundation for the coming age so that they may take hold of the life that is truly life. You want a true life? Maybe that's where true riches are found when we live this way. You know, if you want to be rich, why don't you be rich towards God? <laughs> He's the ultimate giver. He's the source of wealth. God always gives enough. God always gives us more than enough. It's a piece of scripture that tells us too much is given, much is required. So do you invest in God's kingdom? 
Are you investing in others? This week, Michael and I kind of got an object lesson about this. And I shared this on Facebook. And maybe most of you heard this story because you are on Facebook. Mm -hmm. But not everybody's on Facebook. But Michael and I were sitting in our office. It was late afternoon. Uh, The little dingy thing on the doorbell went (laughs) off and someone walked in. And he walked in. And as he walked toward me, he walked toward me and he was holding this. And uh, he walked toward me and he he passed it out toward me, this $100 bill. And he says, hey, uh, I I, I want to give you all this. I said, oh. I said, oh, okay. And he said, he said, he continued. He said, you know, I've been, uh, I was kind of down on my luck. I've been down for a while and I used that food bank out front of your church a good bit. And I just want to give this so I can help others. And when he came in, he wasn't well dressed. He didn't have a suit no. on. He looked like he had just gotten off, um, you know, like he'd just gotten off work. And, and I said, I looked at him, I said, oh, I said, that's amazing. I said, thank you so much for your generosity. I said, are you sure you don't need this? <laughs> yeah. He said, no, I'm sure. He said, I want to help people. You know, it's just an object lesson of someone who understands what true riches are. The question is, do we understand that? Hmm. Are we willing to follow God, to please God, to trust God, to seek God? Because you see, the most important thing you'll ever own out of all the money and out of all the stuff is your relationship with Him. So the cry of our hearts should not be, God, give me more money. God, give me more stuff. The cry of our heart should be, give me more Jesus. God, give me Jesus. That is the source of true riches. And if we're going to take our faith to the next level, we must stop chasing wealth. You know, at Heritage Church, we, we try to offer you some next steps that'll help you grow in your faith. And this month, we're, we're kind of pushing the, the Strengths Finder Seminar uh, here at Heritage Church. And it, what it is, is it, it's not like normal personality tests that tell you something you need to work out or what your weaknesses are. This one focuses solely on what your strengths are and being brilliant in how God made you and put you together and is forming you. Be the best you you can possibly be. And Jesus wants us to do that in this world so that we can represent Him. So if you'd like to sign up for that, it is January 30th at 6 p.m. It's a, it'll be what, like a two-hour seminar, hour and a half, hour and a half seminar. It's a great way to start to figure out where God is pointing you in your life. And the second one is I will help someone in need this week. You know what? We're, we're commanding you who are rich in this world to do good deeds. Do it. Go help someone that needs. Lift them up with some of your riches. And, and if you have a hard time thinking what that is, the next time you go to a restaurant, tip tip very well. Give some make a girl cry money for a tip because every, every server out there could use a little lift. And maybe you want to put your trust in Jesus. Maybe you've never done that and you want to follow this Lord who's telling you that your riches are forgiven away. And maybe you'd like to be baptized. Mark those in the, announce, in, the, in the comments. You can send it to us. You can message us. We'd love to talk to you about what all that means. Um, it, you know, our offering here at Heritage Church, you can give online as well. We have a link on the website. Uh, you can text an amount to 84321, or you can just mail something in. But our offering are for people that consider Heritage their church home. What we do online and in person is our gift to you if you're a guest here today. Please don't feel like you need to give until you feel like you're a part of this church. We never want to end a service without reminding you that church isn't what happens on Sunday mornings. Church isn't in a building. Church isn't online. Church is you when you go out into the world each and every day where you are God's ambassador. You are God's representative. And so we ask you three questions. Who are you investing in? Mm -hmm. Who around you needs someone to see them, to invest in them? Who are you inviting? Not to church, not to online. Who are you inviting into your lives? And who are you including in your family so that they can be part of the family of God. I want to remind you that we do our meeting in person. We have online services at 9 and 10 a.m. At 11 o'clock, we do our streaming. You can put your prayer request in the chat if you have any. If there's anything we can do for you or anything mm-hmm. you need, please let us know. You can private message us. And would you please pray with me as I close our service for today? God, we love you. And God, we thank you. It's with hearts of gratitude we are grateful that you give us what we need. God, we thank you that you are the ultimate giver, but you are also the ultimate provider. God, I ask that you would remind us that you have called us to do good in the world. God, I pray you would humble us as Michael and I were humbled this this week. 
about what true riches really are and how you've called us to invest in others in the world around us, to invest in the spread of your kingdom. God, I ask that we would continue to follow, that we would trust, we would seek, and that our heart's desire would be to please you. And most of all, God, I pray that as we head into 2023, God, I pray that we would let money and stuff be in its rightful place, that you would be number one in our lives. God, we ask that you would just please give us more Jesus. It's in your name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right. Y'all have a great week. Love y'all. We love you guys. Enjoy the music. Take care. Enjoy the music.